Are you ready to get the hydrofacial glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a hydrofacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrofacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. 10 Downing yeah. Street's turned into the Ministry of Sound or the Ministry of Pound. <laughs> <laughs> Come, roll up, roll up. I'm sorry, you're not getting in unless your name is on the door. <laughs> oh, it's my, it's my house. Oh, come on in. <laughs> uh, get Sherry a, a banana daiquiri, please. <laughs> Yes, good, darling. Do you know, um, oh, it's so lovely to see you. I Over the weekend was so weird for me because I usually go over to my daughter's and she tested positive for COVID. So I oh, couldn't wow. go. So I was on my own. But, but you know what I thought? I thought about the thing um, that everyone's been saying about happiness being a great healer, which I've actually told her and, all the, and, her, and the family. And I suddenly saw this this afternoon I would like to share this with you. And it's not about chanting. It's not about meditation. Thank God. But it's from Charlie Chaplin. <gasps> okay. Who is amazing. And he says, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Well, and I totally, agree. Totally right. Yes. Well, the thing that's made me laugh today is yes. Sherry's blouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all. <laughs> yes, say no more, darling. Say no, say no more. more. I, I, I just, um, <laughs> my daughter used to call them nibbles when she was little. Oh, Did she? Wow. Yes, oh, because obviously they, they were. weren't nibbling, but thank you, Sherry, for that. <laughs> <laughs> Have Heaven. you never noticed it before? Never, ever. <laughs> oh. Never, ever, but now I will constantly, <laughs> and I will tell everybody what they are. Our uh, wise, yes. yes, nibbles, nibbles. But I have to tell you something else. That under this coat mm. is a very bloated person, oh, and I was looking at my canal this morning with my ducks and my swans, and I thought I could actually be a lilo because <laughs> I'm so bloated, and people could actually sit on me and paddleboard or and blow you up anywhere. Well, I'm I thought so that I bloated. If you're bloated, could you not use the bloatedness to propel yourself down the canal? Well, I don't know, because I don't know what you do. Why do you get bloated? I mean, this is a bit descriptive, really, but it's what you put in to what yeah. comes out, doesn't it, yes. really? But um, it makes so something isn't, 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 bloated, isn't, isn't, it, isn't bloatedness air? No, yeah. darling, it's gases. It's gases well, it's from gas. Yeah. Well, it's gas and air. Gas no. Well, it may be because yes. you're eating very healthy food, darling. You might be eating lots of No, but I'm not to see D. This is, the, oh. this is my argument with myself oh. that I have in the morning. <laughs> you're not. I'm not eating well. I'm not drinking well. I'm not doing go. anything well at all. Then you've got so your maybe own. that's why I'm blowing up. And I yes, wouldn't yeah. um, I'm sorry to be graphic, Sherry, but when some things do come out, yes. are they still normal? Well, when you say normal, you see, I don't know what normal is. I we mean, one has solid. to analyse normal. Mm. If normal would be sort of semi-solid. So I just wondered, are you eating too many sort of carby things or what? Carby things? What are carby things? Like Minus bread, 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 pasta, bread, a lot, and sometimes carbs in broccoli and some vegetables oh, as I well. Oh, I do eat a lot and of fruit. green things. There you go. That's just yeah. it. Ah, it's your answer. Too many it's green, green It's the green wind, darling. <laughs> <laughs> green wind. Yeah, green wind. I will stop immediately then. Yeah, please go on to something healthy like chocolate. And then yeah. you'll be yeah. And babies. But I'm not like Bob Barrett who had luminous urine. So I'm oh. not that person. Oh, that's I good. But I've actually, I've gone, I've gone vegan mad at the moment. The other have day, you? I had, yeah, I just, all the all the dishes now that you can buy that are vegan, all the all the sausages and all of that stuff. It's just fantastic. And I got your things from Marks and Spencer, Sherry. Your vegan isn't that uh, fabulous? Well, the they just roll. it just tastes nicer than ordinary yeah. food. Absolutely, the duck wrap. Duck wrap. Vegan duck wrap. It yeah. is the best. Honest that to God, is superb. And you can't, it's, it's so superb. big, isn't it, as well? You, it's so big, you can't eat it all. It's just fantastic. Yeah. And all of the marks and spences vegan range. But I still think, sorry, we're going to have a sausage contest on here. And this oh, is yes. not... 
<laughs> so many <laughs> there's yeah. so many euphemisms for a Tuesday yes. afternoon. <laughs> first of all, we have it's first not, of all, this is not a euphemism. No, but let but me just say still, first of all. Can I just say something? First of all, we had to look up Sherry's Canal, and now we're talking about your sausages. I'm well, sorry, guys. Well, well. But no, tell me about, so I think you should tell people about your sausage story. Which one? The Ooh, one you said one. to Bob back when you said, oh, they're the best sausages ever. They are. Yeah, they but are where are they from? I can't they find any They are any called good. Beyond Simply. Sausage. Beyond, oh, beyond, beyond sausage, not yes, so beyond sausage, and beyond burgers. Now, I did try what Bob Barrett told me to try. I tried the Richmond ones, and I've tried the Linda McCartney ones. But to me, beyond sausage, I'm writing it down. Yeah, they are good. Sausage. Absolutely love it, and the beyond burgers are brilliant as well. Right. Okay. Uh, can I can I just bring us back to something that's important um, that I think that Sherry yeah. mentioned. When, yeah. you're, when you're on your own, you said you're bloated. And I was thinking for all of us, whether we're sausaging, burgering, green fooding, it's lucky when we're on our own, because we are, when we yeah. have women. Because we're yeah. the only people who have to it's suffer. Got, well, because of course women yeah. don't fart, do they? They don't. Do you know, no. I had an auntie who didn't fart in front of her husband ever, she said. Well, How could that see, be? No, you because you can't. What do you mean? How can that be? <laughs> she said. She said to me, "I never farted in front of Bob." That was well, her of husband. course not. Why would she? No, no I don't <laughs> think I ever farted in front of Chalice, but obviously in front of David. But never. <laughs> <laughs> really? But I, I, I think I'm How so great. Not? I'm so grateful I can fart my way around my home without having to think. Oh, I can't <laughs> let go. I can let go yes. on my own, and I'm free. To propel myself about the house. That's all I'm it's saying. Absolutely. Show. Are we on a farting show right now? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> it's our special. Well, this, our this, farting this is a special fart The thing that I sent Harriet yesterday was was so funny. Was was a what was it? A, a, a thing that you put up your bum that parts and, and it no. sounds like a, a telephone ringer. Oh no, it was just really? so funny. Anyway, I think now. Do you think we should have our first guest? Our yes. Guest, why not? Guest. Yes. Um, we <laughs> have. Oh, he's here. One of our favourite people in the whole world, it's the wonderful, gorgeous, Mr. Lewis McLeod. <laughs> I'm not sure about the gorgeous bit, but the coconut is absolutely right. You see, I got my hair cut and uh, it was one of those Glaswegian barbers where they talk very quickly, how are you doing there? But they go across <laughs> your head with the clippers at the same speed. And uh, Oh no! Yeah, I, I didn't want to say to him, oh, slow down a minute, this isn't a hedge. But, you know, he's like, <laughs> so, and, and litany of, of chat. I mean, I, oh, thesis funny. in about 30 seconds. And he's left me this thing that I, I keep having to push forward. I look troubled every time I do my hair because I'm going <laughs> to, to stop it, <laughs> kind of sticking up at the back. But anyway, as my mother funny. said, it'll grow back in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, listen, Hen, you look very, very gorgeous. Can you, oh. Where have you been? You've been on holiday, haven't you? Uh, well, we went away. But it nearly never happened. We, um, like everybody, got felled by this COVID nonsense. And uh, it was just, it was a mental November, December. And eventually we got the apps to all work. You know, there's about 20 NHS COVID apps. Oh, but for that one, you need the COVID-24 app. What? And... Uh, <laughs> And then you have to get that thing called a recovery letter, which is a, a, a um, the sort of get into, or rather get out of the UK and get back in okay. But the moment you go to any other country, they go, what is that? Recovery what? <laughs> they want to see that square box with all the little dots on it. Which, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the QR codes. And they don't even have a, you know, Debbie and I have talked about this in the past. They, they don't know how to scan anything. So it's, it's, it's precarious. So even when you think you've got, everything in order you've got the flights the flight companies are brilliant actually virgin were amazing and so were ba with avios they really were fantastic and apart from waiting forever on the phone once you got through to them they were so helpful but we were really up against the clock and we had to actually we had to actually you know extend the departure date so that we could meet all the requirements but oh there we go and uh, <laughs> there's the oh, security. Really, uh, that, that was a really good security. impression, Lewis. That was your best impression. You well, didn't to answer that question, ass. Fido, I'd like to say <laughs> back. Um, but yeah, we um, we got away. We went to Mexico. We uh, went to Playa del Carmen, and uh, it was fantastic. It was. Oh wow! I haven't been. Wow. I, I went when I was in my twenties, and they're, they're loveliest people. They're called. They're Mayans. They're not really Mexicans. They're Mayans, and um, the, the they were just so happy that. And, and the same for everybody that you had decided to go to their country and 
spend your your holiday you know pay packet and it was just brilliant um the the airport security was hilarious because we fell over new year so we had new year at the resort and it was a sort of ole ole kind of new year <laughs> i wore my tartan trousers but forgetting that they're made of wool um i i was half my body size by the end of the night i, I was completely melting and i looked like people were looking at me going what is she wearing what is, what is that you know it's like a, somebody said yeah look like you've had a fight with a tablecloth <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but when they so i got i was absolutely you know sort of new year glasgow smashed and oh happy new year everyone and um I, they, they literally sort of come to your aid to sort of make sure you can stand up all right but because they're only four foot four i felt like gandalf <laughs> i was fredo i'm all right frodo bilbo come back i'm all right <laughs> And they're all following me to my room, but it was it was fine. I fell in a hedge right enough. I did trip. Oh, sorry. And uh, I was fully expecting the bill for that in the morning, but they were very kind. No, it was, it was a brilliant, brilliant place and oh, so full of history fabulous. as well. It was. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's like they've got pyramids hidden that we've not discovered yet. They've got a jungle. It's um, yes. it's like Brian Cox. It's the Yucatan Peninsula. And um, and and you can tan, of course. You you get burnt very quickly. But the behind the resort is a jungle, and it's uh, it's largely undiscovered. And uh, we we did go to a place called Tulum, where they take you around the pyramids and show you, you know, what went on. I mean, it's magical. And and he said, you know, there's about five thousand, they reckon, of these settlements that haven't been discovered, and they're all beautiful. So yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it's such a good time. Yeah, it was great. And, oh, wow. yeah, but, but we did have a bit of a scary moment coming back at the airport in Atlanta where we connected to get back to Heathrow. They did this thing where they where we're just about on, on the plane and uh, a guy shouts over, Oi! And he wants to check if we filled out our passenger locator forms and we'd totally forgotten to do it. Oh, and my God. Like, oh, it was a nightmare and the queue's going down and we're trying to find the .gov website and uh, and all that. And, um, and this woman, this woman came over. Her name was Colleen. And she <laughs> saved our ass. She had fingernails almost the size of my hand. And she she said, give me your phone. And she grabbed my phone. And she just did this stuff with my phone. And I was going, what's she doing? And she's putting numbers in, pushing that button. And she went, get on the plane. And she said, she literally gave us a, a pass to get on the plane. Amazing. Oh, I mean, it was. Her name was Colleen. I should write to them and say thank you. But she was fantastic. And wow. there was no messing. But going down that line, you must be having a heyday with all the politicians, particularly Boris at the <laughs> oh, moment. I mean, what, what, a, what a gift for you oh, this you is know, now. It's, it's been crazy because we came back and of course we were still dealing with the blowback from the first party, but now the, the 10 Downing yeah. Street's turned into the Ministry of Sound or the Ministry <laughs> of Pound. <laughs> Come roll up, roll up. I'm sorry, you're not getting in unless your name is on the door. <laughs> oh, it's my it's my house. Oh, come on in. <laughs> Uh, get Sherry a, a banana daiquiri, please. Four. And um, and he must have been, he must have been absolutely off his face for weeks because she, Carrie's turning up in all these new dresses. Have you seen them? Come on, you need to be pissed to wear one of them. What is she wearing? I, I think it's rather nice. Can I have another magnum of champagne, please? Four. Yeah. The best I one is is the fridge going in when they wheeled the fridge in. <laughs> that was the best shot ever. Yeah, yeah. Like, where's that, where's that <laughs> With the DJ hiding inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm told if you shout "Hey DJ," it plays the radio. It's, it's kind of amazing, and it serves you beer. <laughs> Who you? You know, it doesn't even oh. need a plug. Oh, yeah, there's, beer. there's some champagne. And oh. Keir Starmer has got his moment, hasn't he? He's been yeah. waiting for this moment for years. He's now got his moment. He's got his oh, moment. Pictures of him with a beer bottle, weren't there? <clears throat> oh, yeah, because... Yeah, he's been doing yeah. it too. <laughs> it's the quietest the house has ever been towards each other. Don't you start, because I'll tell you about that party you had in November. <laughs> okay. But there's nobody really to replace him. I mean, uh, Rishi Sunak's no. great. I mean, he's I, I actually during that's what somebody said. I can't remember who said it was on Radio Four. They said the, the work that they've put in has been sizable. The, the the effort of furlough scheme. You know, there were a lot of people that would ordinarily hate the Tories. Mm -hmm. Were going actually, it's not bad. You know, it's yeah, it's not so much free money. We're still having to work, but at least they're giving us something to then have it all undone like that. It was a, it was sad. It was uh, it was a shame really, and yeah. I think that was the the feeling. But it, it's. 
really how they how they move forward. And I don't think Rishi, I think he said, no, I don't want a job. You can have it, you know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Nobody Gordon Brown it. wouldn't have done that. Remember Gordon Brown said, I want the job. I'll do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm a bloody good chancellor, but way too serious, Prime Minister. Oh. <laughs> I remember, that, I remember his first meeting in front of the telly. We were, I was sitting with my, my dinner on my lap watching it. And it was it was a serious one. It was a terrorism related thing. And he he, he kind of walks across the the thing, stops, and then walks towards the camera. And he said, "I've just had a meeting with Cobra." <laughs> <laughs> and my Brussels sprouts fell off my my fork. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so we did it. I've just had a meeting with Cobra. Oh, oh. brilliant. Oh. It's bringing, out, it's bringing out all sorts of things in people, though, isn't it? When you look oh, yeah. at them, you know. All those Fury, people mostly. either fighting for Boris or hating Boris. It's one yeah, or the other, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and we had a, a Zoom recording of Dead Ringers where they, with, it's kind of amazing technically because they get, I feel like Brian Cox again, it's kind of amazing, really. <laughs> they, get, they, get, they get the audience in remotely. So everybody's at home. And it's about a thousand people. So somewhere in Elstree, I believe, that they have a, a department that they've got all the technical guys going, okay. And what they do is they isolate each and everybody that's logged in. The problem with that is if if you do a joke and somebody doesn't like the voice or the joke, you can hear them and they have to find a thousand who is it and go through a list oh, of a thousand no. people. There he is! <laughs> Mute! <laughs> And so you would hear it all the time. You'd be saying like, you know, oh, 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 do, I do a box, and there we go, Fwah. and somebody go, that's a terrible impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Delete. and as I say, it just takes one. But Duncan did a gag, and it, it, it's the longest. I think it's maybe a a record. It's the longest laugh we had on Dead Ringers. It literally oh, wow. lasted twenty five <laughs> seconds, and. And he, all he said wow. was, hello, it's me. And the, it was it was a kind of beautiful moment. And I wished that they had just kept it in so we could all just sit back and go, yeah, it's Dunk, it's brilliant. Oh, wow. it's like, it, was a, it was really special. And um, so do we go back to theatres? Yes. But there's a way of working that actually is creeping up fast. And if I hope that we never get put in this situation of lockdown ever again. Cause never. I, I, they'll never Hopefully support, not. You know, they're never going to get the support, are they? I mean, yeah. they've, 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 no. they've done it. They've, you know, they've done, did for us. But the, um, the, the, the Zoom working from home with audiences is good. It can be quite a lot of fun. Really? Oh, yeah. I think it can be. But I would also say there's nothing like that intimacy of seeing people in the moment live together and yeah. sharing that. I Absolutely. think we all want, as much as it works, the other thing is also that tangibility of being there and laughing with the people that you love watching I on know. all those big shows. I think people are they're going to want to come back in the studios, in television centre. They're going to want to. Absolutely, they are. I, 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 yeah, absolutely I think agree. So. And I think as well, not having masks. I think masks are a good thing, but in a theatre, no, you take no. them off. There, there has to be a sort of freedom of expression yeah. at, at, yeah. in theatres. And can and we it. talk about your new project, darling? Yes. Um, well, uh, yeah. Well, at the moment, I'm I'm sort of on uh, telly, but it's not been it's not went out yet. It's uh, Toast of uh, Tinseltown, which was Toast of London for any fans out there of uh, Toast. It's the funniest show. It's 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 bonkers. It's it, it, it it's so wonderful to <laughs> describe, me. please. Why? Ah, right. Well, why? We've got an actor called uh, Stephen Toast, who exists in a world with his nemesis Ray Purchase. He it, it's where you bring the deceased back to life as though they'd never been away. Um, I played Stanley Kubrick in one episode in the last series <laughs> where they fake the moon landings. I mean, how bizarre. Uh, and, 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 and Stephen Toast, the character, stumbles across the set stoned while <laughs> they're filming. The, I know, and I'm Kubrick going, hey, who the hell is this? Get off my set and chase after him. And you've got Richard Nixon watching this. That's to sort of, that's the shape of it. And oh, my God. Uh, that's Matt really Berry. Oh, he's, Matt, a, Matt Berry is a genius. He's a musical genius, and he's just what they've created. Um, him and Arthur Matthews have created this beautiful uh, landscape where anything can happen. Jim Morrison yeah. comes back to life. You know, there's that, the, oh. which is wonderful. when does it come out, darling? When well, are we going to see it? It's on now. It's, I think it's been on for a couple of weeks now, and the. But, this, but like BBC iPlayer wisely have released all the episodes like right. Prime do and Amazon, so you can watch them all. And I'm on Ep Six playing Orson Welles. <laughs> oh my God! I, oh, think, so yeah. I think we've got a clip of it, darling. To show. Yes, oh. let's play it. I too am an actor by profession. I've also dabbled in direction and production. Some of my motion pictures have won prestigious awards. 
Revelation. Well, that, thanks. I mean, they did say to me, Lewis, we're going to get you a fat suit. And I was like, yeah, brilliant. Because it was Orson Welles at the peak of his girth in 1985. And uh, yeah. so when I turned up and there was no fat suit, I was crushed. I was... <laughs> I'm yes, not that big. Brilliant. That you is know what so I mean? amazing. <laughs> but Lewis, I, sorry D, to interrupt you, but I've got to tell Lewis this, and I, he probably doesn't know this, mm. that Orson Welles did a film in London, and he wasn't around to do the end of the film, uh, the voiceover at the end, and my father did it for him, and nobody wow. ever knew. Wow. wow. Hey, and I, I must find the name of that film, but he did the last... Yeah. Four paragraphs. Oh, Debbie, that's oh, giving yeah. me the... What, what little hair I've got in my head at the minute has just made it go... <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's amazing! But, uh, Debbie, who was your... Who was your? Tell everyone who your father was. For my father was Debbie Arnold, who was an impressionist, but just when I saw you do Orson Wells, I just thought, oh, my God, it's gone in a complete circle, hasn't it, Lou? Complete. That's nuts. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, how fantastic. Because oh. I know that um, you lived with Debbie for a while, didn't you? Well, not That's just, right. But... Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, did you? I did the no, 1995. He was my, he was my surrogate yeah. son. Yeah, my oh. Jewish mama. I mean, you're not really old enough to be my mama, you know, but you, you certainly were an angel, you know, no question about it. There was, oh. um, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's really bizarre because I know Eddie was such a gifted mimic and I had, I learned so much about him. You played me recordings of him. So from the moment I met you, I was kind of going, well, mimicry is my thing. I want to be, you know, successful and I want to do this for a, a living. And so having that, you're right, that's really, really extraordinary that he, yeah. he played Orson yeah. Welles too. I'll high yeah. five him and in the next life. I'll give him a high five. <laughs> it's a great voice to learn as well. You know, you've, I, I, I've watched, this is the brilliant thing about YouTube because back in the 90s when we were getting shows like this coming in, or radio comedy particularly, we would, we didn't, we didn't have any reference. We had to rely on our parents to tape us shows or we had to sit down and pre-record things or get mm. LPs of voices. So having YouTube was great. So I got lost watching interviews with him and, and that wonderful, that sort of how you'd have it. And you could smoke then in the set, you know, have his cigar and his wine and port or whatever he was drinking. Just the best, the raconteur ability of that man was Olympian. Oh, amazing. Can I ask you amazing. Because amazing. your physicality kicks in at the same time as you do somebody. Yeah. So what's the first thing when you're looking at somebody to impersonate? Well, is Rory, it sound or the physical or the whole thing? Well, I don't It's funny you say that because when, when I, um, because I wasn't doing any telly, I was, most of the thing, most of the work I was getting was radio and mm. my own projects, but they were really just fed as audio. And so, I remember having um, a meet up with Rory Bremner came down to watch our show in Edinburgh. This would be yeah. 1990. And it was with um, Rory's uh, beloved writer, John Langdon, his son, Alex. And then there was Victoria Corrin, who's went on to great things. And we did a show called Minor Complications. We were I was actually just turned 20. So I, I was <laughs> probably, I was at the very edge of being probably too old to be in the show. But the Rory came down to see us one night and he... I, I still remember because I I, um, I was impersonating Dan Maskell, who was the tennis. Oh yeah, remember Dan Maskell? That's it. And he never yeah. spoke. He just made sounds. You know, like, and you say, "Oh, well done. Oh, lovely, lovely." Yeah. <laughs> he was really taken by that. He's going, "Well, how could?" Because I was nineteen, but I could sort of do this old guy's voice. And he was saying, "Right, well, what you need to," and and started sort of tutoring me. And that's when my friendship started with Rory. Was um, I saw him as my you know, my course tutor, the, you know, the guy who's your the master. mentor, your mentor, exactly. And he was the, the one. And even if I meet him now, we'll immediately engage in a thing. Have you noticed the Obama? He was talking about Obama and, and there was all these voices that he can do. He, he would sort of coach me somewhat. And I wasn't really aware that I was sort of instinctively doing that or I guess it's a combination of, of instinct and Rory really sort of saying to me, look, watch what he does. That And so I became more aware of it. But, yeah, um, it's like being an actor, isn't it? And, and character, you know, building a character from scratch, like, you know, knowing what they had for breakfast and all that. And it does actually work. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, completely. I mean, there's there's some that I look back at. Now that I've, I've got a bit more visual behind me, I can say, oh, geez, that's, that, I didn't realise I was doing that. Or, uh, yeah. You know, my, my aunt taught drama at, in Alabama and, and she said, put gaffer mm -hmm. tape over your forehead and you'll be aware of just how much you do that with your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Can you imagine, can you imagine you don't Kelly? Need to have yeah. now. <laughs> exactly. Lewis, is there any, any character that you, you know, particularly fond of, that it, your favourite that you've done? 
um, that I've done. Uh, well, I, there's a few. I mean, the I like doing Attenborough because who knows how long we've all got. And I, but I, yeah. I think he's just a voice that that yeah. made you know you know in 50 years time or whatever he's just one of those voices that is such a, i love the way he simply takes his time and he can entreat you with an idea that you find very difficult to disagree with. Oh, but that's i think lovely. you know he's, he's, there's, i think if politicians had that quality where instead of um being so brusque and so uh, yeah. dogmatic yeah. They would get a lot. They would do a lot further. I think Brian Cox has got it as well. Not the actor as well. Although I've been binge watching Succession. That's great, you know. <laughs> if you haven't seen Succession, watch it. It's so good. Yeah. But the, the Brian Cox, you know, anyone, anyone that's got a voice that sort of tonally sounds like he, uh, that they can, that it's a happy prospect. That there's, you know, that. It, it, it's it's really good. I mean, the, the contradiction to that would be Billy Connolly, who's the funniest man in the world, who sounds very sort of, you know, he's in your face. But there's something <laughs> quite optimistic in his aggression. You shut your face. You, yeah. know, I, um, you know, I used to think that people in the North, they've got the, they, they, you know, if somebody pointed a gun at you from the North and talked like that, you'd probably burst out laughing. I don't know. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, well, actually, I can do Kirsty Wharton on the programme. Does anyone know Kirsty Wharton? She's doing something like that, and you can barely make out what she's saying. But that, but what she does, I notice. I'll put my glasses on for this. So Kirsty Wharton, I'll have her glasses on. She'll be like, this, forgive my um, my. I bought these because they, they sort of reminded me of Oliver Reed. That sort of you know those seventies. Very, very much so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, she'll go like this. Well, of course, in the Prime Minister enjoying us in the studio. We've got Shane Houston, Harry Thorpe, Anderson, and Terry Arnold. Now, when she say that, of course, it is. And then she'll mumble. You'll not make out what she's saying, and you that's exactly yeah. anything. She speaks so intelligent that you can't even make you know, what she's <laughs> saying. And then she does this to emphasize the point. She goes, of course, because that's what the Prime Minister did. <laughs> she uses the glasses. Watch Newsnight the next time she's on. When she takes her glasses off, you go, oh. oh <laughs> she's using the my, my father, I'm going, I'm going to give you a challenge. Mm. My, yes. One of my father's greatest impressions, you heard it, was Margaret Rutherford. <laughs> right. Ooh. Right. Yes. Well, yes, with the, with the cheeks. Can you do that? Right. Yeah. You see, because I, I always thought, well, you know, we used to do a voice like um, um, Dame Judy Dench. Now, <laughs> it's slightly that, you know, but we, we did a thing for Private Eye and it was um, Dame Sylvie Crin, the story so far. Bond, take the shot. It was that sort of, and what we, we did was we pitched her voice up a value. I don't know what the numeric value of it was, but we got her voice by by nudging it up. But it was more the uh I, I suppose the the sound like that now n now listen clear, carefully 007 it's a sort of i I'm, I'm nowhere near i know that but that's the only that's about the limit of where i could go unless you <laughs> tickle it and then it sounds quite yeah. feminine bizarrely you know you can crank mm. it up on the on the meter i set you, set you another challenge yes of course come back on our show and do all of us please <laughs> <laughs> if you dare and if you, you dare, dare. <laughs> yes so yes god oh yeah Yes, well, Dad, I think I could probably do a Debbie, actually. Darling. I don't know what that's maybe about. <laughs> oh, oh, you were about to say that. Oh, <laughs> I saw the mouth form, the F one there. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to see that because we have two characters, don't we, called Louise, yeah, Louise and Dolores. Delise, uh, Louise and Dolores, and that's really just my mother. You know, I've given you a bag. She's given me a bag of Brussels sprouts. My girlfriend's going to London to work for a few days, and I'm I'm, I'm on my own with the cats, looking at me like, who are you? And then a bag. <laughs> of Brussels sprouts. That's oh, going yeah. to sustain me for the week. I've got oh, my sprouts. No. We were just talking about one word to you, darling, Lewis. What, what's that? Wind is all I'm going to say to you, darling. Yes, wind. Wind. You don't need to fly. You don't need to fly down, do you? You just need to eat the Brussels sprouts. My mother said, you can never hold what's not in your hand. I'm just so glad we started the show talking about <laughs> farting and we're ending it that way. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect yes. bookend. Lewis. Perfect bookend, Harriet. You <laughs> are amazing. Aristotelian in its structure. It's yes, a win-win. Yes. <laughs> a wind-wind. A wind-wind. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of love. Bye, darling. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> oh, that was great fun. I'm yes. so glad we're free to talk about it in this way because a yes. lot of TV channels wouldn't talk about it, and we can. Well, of we not. can, certainly can. And as exactly. uh, Charlie what, Chaplin what said, a day without actually. laughter is a day wasted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we've had lots today. of that. Thanks.
Thanks. Absolutely brilliant, girls. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, girls. See you Friday. Friday. See you Friday. Bye, Bye darlings. <laughs>